This is Twit. The FDA just approved the first prescription video game. Apparently, this is a first. Uh, uh-huh. It's for kids with ADHD, attention deficit uh, disorder. Uh, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration basically did something that that we've not seen before by approving the video game. It can legally be prescribed as medicine. The game is called Endeavor RX. It was formerly called Project Evo or EVO uh, by a company called Ackley Interactive. It's for iPhone and iPad uh, right now. I don't know if there are any plans to bring this to Android. Uh, Kids ages 8 to 12 years old with ADHD. And you can see a little bit of the gameplay right now if you're watching the video. The game involves kind of like dodging obstacles, collecting targets. I don't know, like... uh, Describing it like that, it sounds like a video game. It sounds like any any old video game. Uh, but apparently this game in particular has been put through seven years of clinical trials, 600 children tested. Um, and when prescribed, because I think it's still kind of early, like it's not being pre- actively prescribed yet. There's a wait list that you can join. Uh, but when it is prescribed, they're recommending 25 minutes per day, five days per week four weeks and after doing that for four weeks they saw one third of the kids that were tested had quote no longer any measurable attention deficit on at least one measure of objective attention so turns out playing this video game actually improves your your ability to be to hold your attention to things you know we're so used to thinking of video games as like distractions and uh apparently this is the opposite so when I was um, back when I was in college, I uh, was listening to a podcast uh, from a dear, actually a couple of dear friends of mine now, who at the time I, I didn't know personally. Um, and one of them, uh, he is uh, a, a podcaster as well, and also he has uh, two daughters that are on the autism spectrum. And those two daughters were also diagnosed with ADHD. And in the process of of uh, getting this ADHD diagnosis, um, the the guy started to realize that some of the symptoms that their the, their doctor, the the daughter's doctor, was talking about were things that he had experienced. And he was always, um, you know, growing up successful in school and didn't have any issues. And so typically those two are associated. The idea that um, you would perform poorly in school if you had ADHD. And so that's kind of what uh, teachers would look for in order to sort of uh, suggest to the parent maybe that the child needed to be tested for it. Um, He went and and was, uh, you know, talked to a a psychiatrist about it. And the psychiatrist said, yeah, that sounds like a lot of the symptoms. And he ended up being diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, Mm -hmm. In talking about that on this podcast, I came to the realization that many of those struggles were things that I had experienced as well. Um, I wanted to be certain with with you know all uh, reasonable doubt cast aside that that was something that I truly had. So I took things a step further and went to what's called a neuropsychologist, where not only do they uh, talk to you and sort of get your backstory, but they also do an electrocardiogram and some other um, physical diagnostics to determine if you have uh, a condition. And so my brain was scanned. Um, and you know, the, I, I came in after this, like, I think it was a three month process and he's showing me my brain waves and showing these areas of high energy that are meant to be on level while some areas were low that were meant to be on level. And so it basically showed that I had ADHD and he called it, uh, a specific form of ADHD called high IQ ADHD. And essentially what that means is that the intelligence quotient of a person masks many of the symptoms of ADHD because, uh, you know, you, you are essentially using that intelligence to, um, continue to achieve, even though it's at a much more difficult level for you because of the ADHD. So all of that's to say I was diagnosed with ADHD. And whenever you shared this story, uh, this, this made me happy because there are many different types of treatments that uh, kids and adults can use for ADHD. And some are more severe, some are less severe. Um, Many of them, of course, are tested and tested and tested. But 
this was tested for, I think they said what? Se yes, yeah, seven years, seven years of clinical trials. Um, and with the, the playing this game, it showed that uh, it, it actually did uh, help with one measure of objective attention and didn't have any longer, didn't have that deficit. That's huge. That is gigantic. Um, there is a, a, a body of research that suggests that our mor motor cortex uh, plays a role in ADHD. And when you exercise your motor cortex more, uh, you then are helping the underlying conditions of ADHD, the underlying symptoms of ADHD. And so hand-eye coordination and things like that are often lessened in folks who have ADHD. And so by strengthening that, you actually improve upon it. Um, so originals, uh, research uh, and and treatments involved some hand-eye coordination games. So I'm not surprised that a video game where you're sort of dodging obstacles and collecting targets uh, would help to strengthen the motor cortex. So all of this is very fascinating to me. I love it. Um, I think this is great. I mean, to that end, when you're talking about hand-eye coordination, God, I mean, video games are are awesome for hand-eye coordination. That's what it's all about. You, you're you're looking at the screen, analyzing what you're seeing, and then directing your hands to make very subtle, in many cases, subtle movements and combinations of movements in order to direct the action on the screen. So it really makes me wonder if video games are actually just in general kind of good or better for um for someone with ADHD to kind of strengthen that, I mean, or, or let's say better than not using it. Like, like would someone see, uh, see improvements in that regard by simply just playing video games in the sense that they do have that hand-eye coordination uh, aspect to it. And I wonder what's different about this compared to playing any, you know, any modern video game uh, between the two. I don't know. Yeah. I, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it is important to note on this, uh, the study involved doctors who were actually working for the developer of the game. So, you know, they, they, in, to some degree, they had a vested interest in these studies, but, but the FDA ultimately approved it. They mm -hmm. were able to, you know, they did a number of studies over seven years. So it's not like it was rushed out or anything like that. And, um, the doctors did also conclude that the game shouldn't be used as an alternative to traditional uh, treatments for ADHD, more like a supplement, something to go along with it because it doesn't treat all of ADHD necessarily, but it is very effective in certain aspects of, of treatment there. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of kind of cool. Like a I video game uh, might, <laughs> who was it? Knox Harrington in the chat room wrote, uh, yeah, that's key to the story with FDA approval. Insurance can pay for this now. So insurance <laughs> paying for a video game. There you go. Insurance. Uh, <laughs> can you pay for these in-app purchases, please? Right. I've racked up $300. No, uh, <laughs> no, I think this is great.